I'm telling jokes and making fun of Jay Leno over and over and over, relentlessly, <laughs> mercilessly, simply for one reason, and that is, I'm really enjoying it. Just how pissed off are you? You, you keep using language like that. <laughs> And you're going to find yourself out of a job. <laughs> I do everything the hard way. And that was hard. But I think, honestly, it had the, the, the better outcome for me personally. NBC never, ever consulted Johnny as to who should be the next host after him. Before, before we start tonight, I want to tell young Jay Leno, I've changed my mind, I'm going to stay. <laughs> Let's look at the history of Jay Leno. Jay Leno pushed Johnny Carson out of The Tonight Show. That was number one, and he did it in a merciless way. Guest host Jay Leno's manager planted a story in the press that NBC wanted Leno to replace Carson sooner rather than later. Johnny was furious. There was a sense, I think, that he got a feeling NBC was, was manipulating him out. Well, there had been a lot of negativity in the air. It just wore him down. And he felt that he was becoming, uh, he was, that NBC wasn't doing enough to protect him. And then uh, Dave Letterman, who wanted the job, oh, okay, he didn't get the job, fair enough. Mm -hmm. But look at the integrity of a David Letterman. David Letterman was rejected by NBC. He was told he was being passed over for the job. Mm -hmm. Did he sit there like a dog? and take that from NBC. No, he did what any man would do. He got up and he moved over to CBS and took over the show. But here's the deal. Uh, I've known uh, Jay Leno for, I don't know, 35 years, mm. a long, long time. Mm. And uh, we used to buddy around in the old days. And uh, w what we're seeing now is kind of vintage Jay. And it's enjoyable for me to see this. <laughs> it's, it's like, hey, there he is. There's the guy I know. And. Uh, I just thought, well, I better keep my mouth shut because I, you know, Lord knows I got my own problems. Yeah. I, I really, I, 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 got, I got my own problems. But I just can't help myself. And, uh, um, you made this prediction, you told Conan that this is exactly what was going to happen. I went on Conan O'Brien's show and I turned to him and I said, you don't really think you're getting The Tonight Show. <laughs> First of all, he was completely, Jay completely sabotaged him. By going on at 10 o'clock, they gave Jay all the best guests. Right. They took away all of Conan O'Brien's excitement and thunder. Right. And they then there's, no, but there's also him. no new And then I you. read in the paper that Conan is going to replace Jay Leno. Thank God. <laughs> you think that's really going to happen? Do I think what? Do you think that's really going to happen? Do you know? <laughs> Jay, I, think I, have, I think it's about a 40% chance that's going to happen. I think the longer we just sit here, the more uncomfortable it will make Jay. <laughs> Jay Leno's a funny guy. I, I, I read the uh, book uh, Late Shift where they talk about all the different late night hosts and yes, yes. it said that Jay wanted that job so bad he would mm -hmm. hide in closets and, let, and listen into the NBC executives talking right. about his fate and he wanted the job from Letterman. I don't see this guy leaving and letting you walk in and I'm it, concerned about you. You're concerned? What uh, about me? <laughs> uh, I, was, I was delighted by everything that happened except you losing your job. I, I will tell you, I will tell you, and this is honest, the only consolation I took during that period was that you were happy. <laughs> big, big, this is a it big may, effort. You know what, I'm very philosophical about it. First of all, it's many years off. I think it's still 11 years away. Is it? Jay will be, uh, like, in his late 80s. I will be, like, 75 when this thing goes down. <laughs> this is a guy who stares at the wall all day, Jay Leno. He waits to go to work. You know, he doesn't like to do anything but work. I don't even know if he has sex with his wife. I don't know what's going on there. So this is going to be very... What do you mean? Oh. <laughs> this is comedy fact. Everybody knows it. I did. I felt this is a... This is a... He, he, sometimes Dave seems a tad unhappy in his life. Uh, and if this is bringing you some measure of joy... Then to hell with my career. Yeah, no. You know? 
I'm... What did you think of what he did to Conan O'Brien? And as far he did a terrible thing to Conan O'Brien. I mean, wasn't it just business, really? No, it wasn't business at all. It, it, it's a, such a complicated. Did you ever read Bill Carter's book on it? Read sure. that and then figure it out for yourself. Yeah, but what, what is your as a professional entertainer? Isn't it Law of the Jungle? I mean, if your ratings aren't doing great, and of course, someone but, else comes along. But he had made certain guarantees to Conan. So this is your show. If, if I was Jay Leno, I would have manned up. I would have said, listen, Conan, you think you're so good? I'm going to go to Fox Network or I'm going to go to ABC and I'm going to put my show on and I'm going to kick your ass. That's what a man does. You don't sort of weasel your way back in by saying, I'm going to do 11.30. Does Conan have a problem with that? Conan said, yeah, I do have a problem with that. Didn't matter. Jay took it anyway. And so they went to Jay, Big Jaw Leno, and they yeah. said, uh, Jay, uh, we're, we're taking your show away from you. Yes. And uh, Jay said, yeah, okay, well, that sounds pretty good. Right. Right. Um, yeah, I was going to suggest that. Right. <laughs> the most important thing to me I think is the empathy that you have to have for the performer. I think this is the greatest thing that a performer can have if he's going to be successful as an entertainer is an empathy with the audience. They have to like him. They have to like him. And if they like the performer, then you've got 80% of it made. Just the mere mention of Jay Leno's name makes me want to vomit. I don't like this guy. I don't disguise it. And probably what irritates me the most is people in show business are afraid to say how much they dislike Jay Leno, but I am not. And why? why uh, would I, number five, you're known for pranks. What's the best prank you ever pulled? I think the best prank I ever pulled was I told a guy, I told a guy that five years from now, I'm going to give you my show. And then when the five years came, I gave it to him, and then I took it back almost instantly. Wow. Wow. It was hilarious. Any ill feelings towards NBC and Jay? Not that you're going to be honest, but go ahead, go for it. Um, yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Number six. <laughs> Ever order anything off the TV? <laughs> like NBC ordered your show off the TV? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Oh. Actually, something like that, yeah. Um, NBC, definitely. Uh, everybody said they were going to do something, and then they didn't. Right. You know, they all said years ago, we're going to do something, and then they didn't. Mm. And, you know, and there was all kinds of talk about our ratings not being very good, but they were pretty good all summer. Sure. And yeah. then the, our lead-in changed. Right. And they didn't, they weren't so good anymore. It's very hard, I would think, to have a lead-in for a, 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 a nighttime talk show that is a nighttime talk show. Yes. I mean, you grew up in Las Vegas and hosted the man show. What's the most number of lap dances you've had in one night? I don't like, you know, strippers I don't like in general because you have this phony relationship with them for money. Similar to that of when you and Conan were on The Tonight Show together, yes, yes, passing yes. the torch. Right, right, yes, yes. You know what I'm saying. Yes, yes, I yes. do. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. But it is, it's very frustrating when somebody says, and, that, and especially when they're on videotape saying, mm. I'm going to take this number one show and hand it over and hope that the next guy gets it to, makes it a number one show, and then doesn't. Right. And, and says things like, you know, well, they didn't, I didn't have any choice. They wouldn't let me out of my contract, mm. which, you know, mm. how multimillionaires are always being forced to do things they don't want to do. <laughs> what do you fear most? I fear the network will move my show to 10 o'clock. Right, right, right. I had that nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> All right, number I nine. Go. Number nine. Is, is there anything you haven't hosted that you want to host? Oh, this is a trick, right? Where no. you, you get me to host the Tonight Show and then take it back from no, me? No, 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 no. I'm not, not going to. Listen. No, no. Listen, Lucy, I'm not Charlie Brown. I don't fall for that trick. <laughs> so does that mean that you didn't get the big money pay? I, I've heard upwards of $47 million. Honestly, this is the thing that, and it was immediately irritating to people that worked on the show. Because, I mean, from, from stagehands to producers, right. they're getting all these emails and Facebook things about like, well, huh, you know, enjoy your golden parachute and stuff. Right. It, it's not like that. It's not like that? It's not like that at all. In fact, uh, Conan is putting a lot of his own money 
right. out there. He formed a little corporation just to pay people oh. to keep them, because all these people moved from New York to California right. Right. to be on this show. And a lot of the people, they are there robbed of their contacts. So even in a downtime like this, they don't have the contacts that they would have here on the East Coast to go get work elsewhere. So much so. goes into it that, you know, I, I didn't even think about it. In your life, have you seen a picture of Jay stopping by the side of the road to help elderly folks who have run out of gas or whose car has caught fire, who have lost a tire or something? And there is Jay being the good Samaritan to help out those people, like, like the AAA, except uh, the AAA doesn't bring a photographer. That's the only difference between Jay and the AAA. And I loved when you were fighting with Leno. I, was I still right am, there. it turns out. It turns out yeah. you are. He opened yeah. his big fat trap <laughs> about you. Uh, he said the reason that you don't like him is because you wanted to get in with me. Yeah. Which is about as bizarre as it comes. The reason you don't like Jay, if I can reveal this to America, is because you just don't like Jay. <laughs> you hate him. I don't hate him. I, I don't, don't hate him. I don't like Jay either, but I miss, you know... <laughs> <laughs> we, we really don't. We talk about this stuff when we're on vacation. That is not true at all. Yes, we do. And it's, it's uh, Jay, yes. it's Conan, and it's me. And every now and then, Jimmy Kimmel comes in and causes some trouble, which yeah. is great. Yeah. So, Jay, Conan oh. and I have children. Oh, I'm sorry. All you have to take care of is cars. That's right. I mean, we have lives to lead here. You, you've got $800 million. For God's sakes, leave our shows alone. <laughs> A plea from Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy, thank you very much, my friend. See you tonight. And he said that uh, we should not blame Conan for what's going on. Don't blame Conan. Don't blame Conan for what's going on. And I said to myself, no one is blaming Conan. I was <laughs> Or Jay was always the guy, the funniest guy. He was the guy. He was the guy you'd go to see. He was the guy you wished you could be more like. Uh -huh. He was funny. He was also uh, a bit of a brat. <laughs> A bit of a brat, uh -huh. uh, and so then, um, oh, you know, when this came along, I said to myself, oh, yes, this is the Jay I know, and I really, <laughs> and, and I kind of, you know, I refer to that period as the golden age of television, really. <laughs> the period when I lost The Tonight Show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not, that, that brief <laughs> week and a half period, for you, is the, the golden, golden age of broadcasting. Yes, that's right. But it has... Has nothing to do with you. And I'm. Well, I was. I, I, I mean, in the thousands and thousands of words that have been printed about this mess, who has blamed Conan? No one. I don't think so. No one has blamed Conan. That's a 60-year bus that's been driving around the country, the Tonight Show, and if you're lucky enough to get to drive it, when they say, hey, you're done, you give the keys back and you say, thank you, you don't flatten the tires of the guy who comes next, you know? Right. When, when uh, five years ago, when uh, NBC said to Jay, you know what, Conan's going to take over your job in five years, that's when you say, okay, fine, no hard feelings, you call ABC, you call Fox, you try to get my job, you leave, you don't, you don't, yeah, I'll, yeah okay, but if you, I'll be in the lobby, you know, if you need me. <laughs> Don't hang around. Come Jay, on, Jay, Jay is insane, and Jay is a crook, and the whole world knows exactly what he's up to. I know I always bring up Jay Leno every time I come on here, <laughs> but this is b blowing my mind. Jay Leno recently said that now you two guys are exchanging phone calls with one another, that you're actually talking on the phone. Is this true? We have spoken on the phone, yes. Well, I'm out of here. I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I give up. You know, Dave, I got to tell you something. I feel like a guy, I never served in the military, but I feel like a Vietnam veteran. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like I'm still in the jungles fighting your war. Thank you. And you've made up with Vietnam. I mean, I mean, what is it? He steals a tremendous amount of material. He's not fit to scrub David Letterman's feet. I don't know why he's beaten David Letterman in the ratings. It's beyond my comprehension. America must be filled with morons who at night lay in bed the ones who are watching him, they must be in a coma. Jay Leno will forever blow my mind. This is a guy, he, he, he took the Tonight Show from you. You were this close to getting it. This was your dream. You want to be Johnny Carson. God love you. You had such a dream, and, you, and Jay snatched it from you, snatched it from you. And I got so caught up in your drama. Mm -hmm. I love you. You I know how I feel about I you. I feel your you're support. a superstar. All right, now let's, let's stop here again and examine. No, 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 no. no, no. Let's examine the issues. You're on the phone. Hello, Jay. Oh, hi, Dave. How are you? My best friend in the whole world. 
I don't like Jay personally. I, Jay, no, was, I one of the the Jay was one of the greatest stand-up comics, in my opinion, when he was younger. But I do not like how he's behaved with me personally. I've done his show many times in the past. I won't do it again. And you know what? I've let go of all of that, even though I'm ranting and raving like a lunatic for your show. Mind you. Mind you, I work for NBC television now, and I'm not speaking to Jay Leno. They asked me to go on his show. I go, no, he did Dave wrong. I don't like it. He's on the phone. Oh, hi, gang. Great. I'm fighting the war. I'm still in the jungle. Are, are, are there people that at a certain time in your career you didn't see eye to eye with that now that you have a, a positive communication Yes, with? I have, but not Jay Leno. Boy, yeah. I, I, I tell you that. Not only did I learn how to do everything from Dave, the reason I have this show is, is, beca <laughs> is because the executives at ABC um, saw me when I was a guest on Dave's show and hired me to host this show. So I want to thank Dave and his writers and producers. <laughs> But let's face it, there are simply are no words that can encapsulate the sheer magnitude of what Dave has achieved these past 33 years. It can't be done. It cannot be done. I, I, I started drawing pictures of Dave on the covers of my textbooks at school. Uh, when I turned 16, we have a picture of, well, that's my Aunt Chippy. My mother baked me a late night with David Letterman cake, and I, you can see I'm wearing a Dave Letterman Letterman jacket. My first car, I went to the DMV, and I got a late night Vanity plate. That's the point behind all of this is I'd, I just want you to know tonight that if you have ever liked any silly or stupid thing that I've done on television over the 22 years, you must know, you must know that it probably never, never would have happened if it weren't for Dave. It would not have happened. Especially if you're a young person who doesn't understand what all the fuss is about, Dave is the best and you should see him. And, uh... <laughs> But please switch over and watch Dave, and I'll tell you why. I promise you, we will not see a man of his talents and comedic integrity again in our lifetime. You cannot miss out. Have a great show, Dave. Have a great show. <laughs> I'm acting as if he's watching. He's not watching. <laughs> Maybe they'll show it to him. Have a great show, Dave, and from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. We'll be right back. You know, the one thing I'll never, well, ever, this happens to everybody, that the kind of thing I'll always remember as long as I lived growing up in Indiana is when Dad used to tease me with the power tools. How many of you? <laughs> Did you have that? <laughs> what a guy. What a guy. Sense of humor. Yeah. It takes weeks or months for the adrenaline to drain out of your system because here it is. It's The Tonight Show, and, and you've gotten laughs, and you get to sit down with Johnny Carson that's the end of the world. That, that's just it. I mean, if, if nothing more had happened for me, I could always get a free beer in any bar in the country telling that story. Any one of these from Johnny was one of the greatest things in, in my career. You know? Jerry Seinfeld. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Bob. The truth is, I still think about it, you know, because you sat there and you went, this is some kind of magic place. My folks are moving to Florida. Uh, they don't want to move to Florida, but they're in their 60s, and that's the law. <laughs> Long Island. You're, I think you evicted from Long Island, aren't yeah, you? 60. They, they have like a leisure police of some kind. <laughs> get the golf clubs, get in the van, folks. You know, There's just not that many moments of life that are that definitive, of a before and an after life. You know, before you're wanting to be a comedian, and after you are one. You know, for my entire career, I've heard comedians in bars debate over who do you think is going to get The Tonight Show after Johnny leaves. What nobody realized is that when you left, you were going to pack it up and take it with you, which is what he did, because that show never existed again. There never was a Tonight Show. It was Carson. He would see a story about someone in need and pick up the phone and, and write a check all the time. And he never said anything to anybody about it. So there he is in the end with the largest charitable foundation of probably anybody that's ever been in the entertainment business. And nobody knew. Johnny Carson coalesced 
in my life. He gave me something to aim for, some, something to emulate. Well, that's not going to happen, but, you know, you got to have a target. you got to have something to shoot for. He put me together as a person, honestly. Um, so I forget the question, but <laughs> that's the answer.